Mistral just announced their new series of models called Ministral. According to them, they are introducing the world's best edge models. So let's take a look at the announcement and some details and go through some of the results that they are reporting here. And I'll also provide you some of my thoughts. I'm very excited about smaller models. That's a trend that I have kept track of during the past few months. And I can say that Mistral AI is really doubling down on the smaller model trend and there's a good reason for that. So let's go through the announcement and some of my takeaways. So they're introducing the world best edge models. And if you have kept track of the space, you would know that Meta also is pushing for these smaller models. And I think Meta is probably the closest in terms of competition to Mistral. There's also the Gemma 2 series of models as well, which they do mention here, a few of them. Those models are also very good small models in that range of sub 10 billion parameters. Okay, so they're introducing Ministral 3B and Ministral 8B. These models set a new frontier in knowledge, common sense, reasoning, function calling, and efficiency in the sub 10 billion parameter category. So we're going to take a look at the results in a bit. And the models support 128K context length, currently 32K on VLLM. And they mention here that Mistral 8B has a special interleave sliding window attention. To, so this mechanism here actually helps these models to be faster and memory efficient. So that's also something that they took into consideration. So again, smaller models, more efficient models, and also very capable models at the same time. So the use cases they are going for, this I found really interesting, is that they are seeing a lot of demand for local privacy first inference for critical applications such as on-device translation, internet-less smart assistance. This is something I have advocated for. Like I use these models for a lot of local type of services. I use them for assisting me with code, assisting me with like even knowledge-based questions and a bunch of things like transcription, translation, and so on. So they're pretty useful locally. I am glad to see Mistral AI focusing on this. Local analytics as well, processing data, all of these different things that you would do locally. You don't need internet for all of these things or access to the internet. And then autonomous robotics as well. So if you can run that on your machine, right, on device, that's really powerful. And that's what they're going for here. And I like that Mistral is really focusing and really doubling and tripling down on the smaller models. They have released a bunch of small models this year in 2024. And actually they have a nice little like figure here where they show that they have Ministral 3B, Ministral 8B, Pixral, Mistral Small, and there's also the Nemo model as well. So they are really focusing a lot in this area. And it makes a lot of sense because if you're developing applications or serious applications with LLMs, you would know how useful these smaller models are. And in fact, you can use them for all kinds of things, such as processing information, as I mentioned here, you know, smart assistance, doing analytics, structuring information, and so on. So they are suggesting that these models will be great to use in conjunction with the LLM, so the large language models such as Mistral Large. And in fact, this is how we actually use these models today. Like I would use something like a mini model together with a more powerful model. And it doesn't matter the LLM provider. This is how I am developing today. So it's really great to see that Mistral is also paying a lot of attention to developers because this is how developers are using these models today, like combining smaller and bigger models to build really powerful and complex workflows based on language models. They can be tuned as well to handle input parsing, task routing, and calling APIs. So task routing, if you're routing LLM calls, this is a great area to actually be using these smaller models. So input parsing, processing information, structuring information if you need to, doing the function calling, calling different API endpoints if that needs to be done, like calling different tools. So there's a variety of different use cases for where you would want to apply small language models, and they really understand this. You can see that they're mentioned in this in their blog post. And again, at an extremely low latency and cost. We'll talk about the cost in a bit. So these are the benchmarks. So these are the results for these models. So these are the pre-trained models. And they also report results for the instruction tuned models as well. And you can see the 40 different models for the different benchmarks, how these perform. Now, take a look at Ministral 3B and Gemma 2 2B. And even including this one, which is a Lama 3 
5.2 Tribute, which, which I think is one of the most powerful small models that exist today. And you can see the comparison. There is a significant boost in performance across all of these benchmarks. This is consistent. And you will see that for human eval code generation, math related benchmarks as well, and even translation. It's just consistently outperforming the other models across these benchmarks. That's really great to see. So knowledge, code, math, and multilingual capabilities. And here is a more detailed analysis of the different models of so Ministral 8B, Ministral 7B, Ministral 3B. So let's look at these two, Ministral 8B, just to see what was the performance jump here. All right, so it's really hard to tell with the orange here, but I believe it's this one. You can see how it's significantly outperforming, at least the Ministral 8B is outperforming Ministral 7B by a lot. You can see even for like math related tasks, huge boost in performance. For MMLU as well, huge boost in performance. This is general knowledge capabilities. And then you have the MMLU as well, which is the standard one. This is the multilingual one, also huge boost in performance. This only states that this model is really good at different languages, which is good to see. And if you compare the Llama 3.2 and the 3.1 8B as well, you will see here that the 8B is probably the closest in terms of models from other LLM providers, but still for knowledge and common sense, there's a huge significant gap. These are the instruct models. So again, the performance consistently improving on the previous models that exist today, so such as Lama 3.23b and Gemma 2 b So one model that's missing here is Gemma 2 9b. So there is a model like that out there, and there is a paper with those results. I would have liked to see the results. In fact, I saw this tweet from Armand, who is a principal researcher at Google DeepMind, and he mentioned that here. So he mentioned that Gemma 2 9b was dropped from the table, so the result is not here, but he has incorporated that, and you can see how this 9B model is really, really good. So I would have loved to see that kind of comparison as well. There's an issue here because the thing is, like, how are we evaluating these models, right? Is there an open way on how to do this properly so that we can compare all of these models in a fair way? I do believe that that is going to be really important as there's more competition around these smaller models. So... I think companies need to be very transparent about that because then it would be really hard to know which one of the models is great at what. I mean, at the end of the day, all these models have their strengths and weaknesses. And so I think it's really important to compare these benchmark results, especially for the smaller models, really matter a lot. And so at the end of the day, you have to do your own testing. You have to try things out on your own and see what actually works for you. With the exception of here with this Gemma 2 9B, which they include in the instruct model, you can see here it's part of the results here, but it's not part of the result right here. So I'm not sure why they missed that one, but you can see that this model is pretty good, right? Like the results are pretty close with the Ministral 8B. So the big question for me here is, what exactly is the secret sauce here? I do think it's very similar to what Meta is doing with their smaller models where they are distilling on the bigger models, right? They have this really huge 400 plus billion parameter model, which they are distilling into these smaller models and they're building more capable smaller models. I think the newer iterations of the Llama models will be interesting because I think they can only get better from what I saw with the results. And so that distillation process is really important. I think they're doing something like that, maybe using some synthetic data, but definitely for sure, I think they might be using the distilling process. There's no details about that here. I'm not sure why. All right, so that's pretty much the announcement here is just the availability and pricing. You can use it via the API already. So we will take this for a spin at some point and do a separate video on that. And then we have the pricing here, $0.1 per million token, 0 0.04 dollars per million tokens and the license is provided here i think this is an interesting area of smaller models and how mistral ai is investing and really focusing in this particular trend so great to see great work from the team and thanks again for making the models available the, the model weights at least for research use i think this would be extremely useful to perform research on these smaller models and what they're capable of all right so that'll be it for this video thank you for watching consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and i'll see you all on the next one